the the pandemic delivered a devastating blow on world economies including south africa um, and for us the first bits of data suggest that the economy contracted by over 50 percent um, on a seasonally adjusted and annualized basis in the first quarter of this year and that number um, puts us as one of the worst affected countries in the world and of course the economic weakness in the south african context predates the pandemic so what really happened is that the the, the, the pandemic just exacerbated the already existing weakness um, in, in the south african economy which then makes the recovery process a bit more difficult compared to other countries um it, it data suggests um look Looking at the data in its totality suggests that it will take us a bit of a while to fully recover um, from from such some from such a massive from such a massive impact. High frequency data at this stage suggests that there's a bit of normality that is taking place at the moment. Um, there is a recovery process that that is underway at this stage. You look at retail sales data or shopping activity, which is a measure for shopping activity, suggests that there was a sharp impact particularly around um, April um, April and May. And now consumers are starting to go back to the shopping malls. They're starting to spend um, a bit more um, than during during those times. So by all counts, it looks as though um, recovery is taking place there. The very low interest rates would have assisted the cash-strapped consumer. But of course, we know that that impact, the positive impact, the stimulative impact of interest rates um, is, is relatively short-lived. So we expect it to wane um, to wane over time but um, by all counts at this stage the, the, the data suggests that we are retracking the 2019 levels but we are still uh, we are still a bit of a distance away from 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 some from such levels if you look at industrial production which is um, a combination of mining and manufacturing um, um, output which we measure which we use as a litmus test for real economic activity there too um, there, 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 there seems to be some sort of a recovery that is taking place after that sharp impact um, during 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 the month of, 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 of April and May. Subsequent to that, and as um, lockdown restrictions were lifted, output is starting, um, is starting to normalize, and it is now retracking the 2019 levels, which were already low levels, I have to point out, um, but it is a recovery nonetheless. So all in all, um, the recovery is underway, but it looks a bit fragile at the moment. The biggest risk um, that we that we, that we see at this stage is the potential of a delayed impact um, on, on 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 the labour markets. Numbers. Um, Numbers are unclear at this stage, but large numbers are being thrown around, ranging from 1 million to 3 million um, potential job losses. And for a country with a 30% unemployment rate, that will really be um, devastating. The impact, will, the impact will be large, and it, it definitely will undermine the, 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 the recovery process that, that, has started taking, that has started taking place. So all in all, the impact has been, um, has been quite large, but high frequency data suggests that um, we, we are recovering, although we are still operating well below, um, well below capacity at this stage. But third quarter data suggests that um, we will see much better um, economic activity in the third quarter compared to the first quarter. So we will definitely recoup some of the losses we suffered in the second quarter, but maybe not all of it. It might take us um, a long time before we fully recover from, um, from such a devastating impact. So what has been the impact on the property market? Quite an interesting question. Um, it's a tale of two markets, really. On the one hand, you've got your rental market, and on the other, you've got housing market. At this stage, it appears as though the rental market um, has been disproportionately affected by, by, by the pandemic. And of course, the other side of the coin is that what has been um, a loss for um, what has been a loss in the in the labor market in, in, in the rental market has been a gain in, um, in, in in the ownership market in the home ownership market. At this stage, we are seeing buying activity, buying uh, buying activity particularly from first-time buyers um, and first-time buyers that are under the ages of um, under the age of, of, of 35 large volumes can be attributed to that um, to those customers to that group of um, group of customers and we know that those are the those are the um, those are buyers that tend to be sensitive to, um, to, 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 to to economic shocks and that tend to be sensitive to interest rate decision so what has been behind what has been driving this activity we know that we are not creating new demand. Um, we are not. We know that we are not creating new employment, and so, so, so therefore we are not creating new demand. So what really is happening is that 
um, um, there is this ongoing shift or this ongoing swift um, shift away from renting towards um, towards owner or towards ownership so there's this um, ownership drive if you will that that is taking place um, at the moment which explains why the rental market has been um, has been um, disproportionately affected um, affected by, by 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 the pandemic what are the drivers behind this well the first and probably the biggest is the aggressively low interest rate that is taking place at the moment the second one is good pricing in some suburbs, particularly affluent suburbs, like your Centin, like your Camps Bay, um, that is that seems to be um, attracting attracting buyers, particularly first time buyers. And number three, the lowering of transfer duties would have also assisted, particularly um, for properties under the under the um, under under um, one million value. Um, so 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 combining all these three factors means that um, affordability. Um, has improved quite significantly and um, data suggests that South African consumers are taking advantage uh, taking advantage of it. Um, it did ca catch us by a surprise. Um, not many of us would have expected this kind of activity that we are seeing in the middle of the pandemic. We did expect that the recovery was going to be driven by first-time buyers but the timing um, of, of all of it um, was out in the, in, in the latter part of 2020 and early parts of 2021. So timing did really catch us, um, catch us by, by a by surprise and of course the working from home arrangement would have assisted in this um, ownership drive there is this perception that um, owning a home um, um, gives you a bit of more flexibility so more more of a conducive environment um, for, for, for for working from home we are seeing or we are going to start seeing um, some types of properties gaining popularity in line with um, the working from home arrangement so you're probably going to see um, properties with that offer garden um, properties that um, with 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 um, an extra room for a study um, gaining popularity due to this um, due, to, due to the changing needs um, of of, 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 of um, of the consumer of the South African um, consumer mainly driven by this working from making from home arrangement again the biggest question there is will this um, kind of activity that we are seeing um, will this will this be sustainable I mentioned that um, we haven't probably haven't seen the worst in in, in, in terms of um, of the labor market we know that we are not creating um, we are not creating um, new employment at this stage so it hasn't been income driven it's mainly been interest rate driven so um, and because of that the the the, the, the stimulative effect um, of, of the low interest rate tends to be um, tends to be short-lived um, it wanes over time and because um then because it's not income driven in our view is that once once we start seeing large scale um, job losses uh, that will put downward pressure on activity and by extension it will push um it will it will push prices down so 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 um at this stage it appears that um it's probably not um this activity is probably um not going to uh, not going to be sustainable for a long time um once once we start seeing some pressure in the labor market it's likely going to be to to, to taper off and prices are likely to um then adjust from um, from that point onwards now speaking about um, improved affordability and um, participation of, uh, of first-time buyers in the South African property market landscape, what is the outlook on interest rate? Um, how long before we start seeing um, hike in interest rates, um, or are we going to start? Or are we going to see? Is this is the low interest rate environment a new norm? Um, the sub came out a couple of weeks ago and suggested and and and, and suggested that the um their the, their um qpm model um suggests that we should expect two interest rate hikes um in the later part of 2021 in the third and fourth quarter of 2021 the market is already also um expecting interest rate to start um to start going up over the next over the next two years our view is slightly different our view is that with inflation being so low um and with more pressure um, likely coming from the labor market, demand is going to take a, a another knock, which uh, will mean that um, which would would potentially mean that inflation will remain low for for for, for much longer than um, than 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 than, um, than the sub or the market um, the market expects. So from from where we stand, there potentially is and um, there potentially is um, a room for one last. 
um, interest rate cut and um, interest rate would remain flat after that throughout the the forecast horizon so throughout the next um, over the next over the next um, over the next two years um, even if there will be that pressure to hike interest rates we don't think that it will be quite a, as an as an aggressive um, hike as, as 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 the cuts were so even if um, there is a need to hike interest rates it's probably going to be a gradual and a slow process it's it's difficult to see um, it, it's difficult to see aggressive hikes under the current circumstances with such high levels of unemployment with such low levels of demand with such low levels um, of, of inflation it's just um, it's, it's, it's not easy um, to see that kind of a scenario so um, by all counts interest rates are probably going to remain low for the long for the, for a long time um, even if there is that pressure to hike it's probably going to be a gradual process it's not going to be as as, as aggressive as as, as as the cards were so in closing the the the, the, the very low interest rates have had a major um, have been a major surprise factor in the property market. We are seeing a lot of activity, particularly from um, from buyers that are sensitive to, to, to such decision. But the biggest risk for us right now is the potentially delayed impact on the labor market, which has an impact of putting downward pressure on activity and by extension, downward pressure on, uh, on, 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 on prices. So in closing, I would like to encourage everybody to visit our FNB booth. There will be a um, FNB representatives sitting ready to answer your immediate questions and there will be content for you to download.